Hey, it's John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and it's The Entrepreneurial You, the show for dedicated and passionate Caribbean entrepreneurs seeking daily inspiration, brought to you by author, speaker, and award-winning entrepreneur, Henneka Watkins-Porter. You must be prepared to ignite. If we knew what it is we were doing, it would not be called research, would it? Albert Einstein. Greetings, everybody. What a go on, what a go on, what a go on. Welcome to episode 105 of the Entrepreneurial You podcast. I'm Henika Watkins Porto. Now, today's guest is with Nitin Sharma, a big picture oriented business strategist with experience in market research, data analysis, statistics, project management, and industry and market analysis in multiple sectors. Today, we're going to be talking about going global from the get-go, business research and the entrepreneur. Welcome, Nitin. Thank you, Annika. So nice for me to be here and thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. Now, um, a little fun question, if you will. Where in Jamaica um, have you heard that it's not quite safe to visit or have you heard anything of that nature? No, I haven't. You know, my understanding of Jamaica is that it's a beautiful place to visit and it's on my places to visit as well. Oh, absolutely. So kind of you. So when you come here, when you when you actually get here, please plan to hook me up and, um, you know, I'll take you on if you ever come to Kingston. So let me know when you're coming to Jamaica. All right. Absolutely. Will do. OK, so now let's talk about going global from the get-go, business research and the entrepreneur. Now, somebody with a business idea at the initial stage is perhaps very, very anxious to just get started. And oftentimes that excitement happens at the cost of doing proper research for that business venture to see whether or not it would have been successful. And if we even know like the statistics that they say about, you know, startup failure rates and so on after whatever period. Now, how can we get it right from the get go? You know, that's a great question, Henneke. And just so that you know, apart from people who have this great idea or uh, people who are thinking of taking the plunge and starting their own startup, uh, this is a challenge that even faces a lot of large companies that you would think, you know, have it all figured out. So I think it's a great question on figuring out, is this idea even worth pursuing? Because so many times in the world that I live in, um, I see ideas that seem good on paper. And people have spent so much money, so much time, so many resources in just following that idea only to find out that A, it didn't or was never destined to work, or B, there always was a competitor that had beaten them, had a full-scale product or service in the market where their idea is, is just not as useful as it was maybe six, seven, nine, or 10 months ago when they first thought about it. So doing that type of research, um, local first, global next, is so critical. Right, absolutely. Now, where does the entrepreneur start? I think the first thing that an entrepreneur starts is by not calling companies like mine, which are full-service research shops, uh, that cater to um, large companies. I think the place that an entrepreneur first starts is on this website called google.com that <laughs> you might have heard of as well. Uh, but, you know, it's so important. Uh, I tell entrepreneurs all the time, use Google, make it your best friend, research your idea, research the industry, research the market before you do anything before you even spend one dime of your money into that idea. Mm. So, I mean, you mentioned going on Google. We know that once you get on the internet, it can be it lead you into like a rabbit hole, a black hole, as it were, because you you go for one thing 
and you end up spending hours on the internet before you know it, you know, you're there and you never even got to the information that you were actually looking for. Now, how can, you know, a startup, you know, be guided? What are we looking for when we go to Google? Um, you know, what are some of the effective ways that we can actually use Google, leverage it to um, research and, and, and get the answers that we're seeking? And, you know, what are we looking for? Yeah, that's another great question, Hanika. And what I propose to all uh, young aspiring CEOs or startup um, entrepreneurs is be laser focused on what is it that you're trying to find out. So, for example, uh, if you have this great idea about a new service or a product, be focused on what is it that you want to find out. For example, a question that I would have is, what's your competitive landscape like for this idea? Is anybody else doing it? So maybe that's the first thing you need to research. Um, the second question I have is, how scalable is this idea of yours? Would this be global, you know, as is the topic for today's discussion? Or would it be serving a very niche local market? And niche and local is not bad. You just need to know what you're going to be doing and where where would the, the focus of your idea or service should be. And then the third thing is the economics of it. How much do you think this would price, be priced at? How much do you think your new idea, your product, your new service, how much you, would you be able to sell it for? And again, you know, if there is competition out there, how much are they selling it for? So, you know, to answer your question, it's almost like before you even get on Google, maybe the first step is make a checklist of the first five or 10 questions that you need to answer for yourself before you start writing checks and spending your time and money on that idea. If your idea is to start a fashion business, Perhaps you want to go on Amazon, for example, and just to look at maybe the top five sellers, where is it being sold and the price point that is there, things like those. So Google, Amazon, for example, is a great place to start for the like product if you have a product idea. Another thing I like to, to suggest as well is answerthepublic.com. As you're talking about, I don't know if you use that as well, Nitin answer the public.com where you pretty much on any subject matter that you want to find out you can put that in right there and it gives you a, a myriad of questions that are being asked on google so it links to those questions and so you know exactly what people are asking you know exactly um how many people are interested in that topic um that product that service kind of a thing so um as you're saying that i just thought i'll share that as well as a guide you know, in, in just a practical way in that we, in which we can find answers to our questions. Now, you've, you've said some interesting things so far. Now, in terms of primary versus secondary data, let's look a bit on that. How can we use data effectively to guide the research process and what type of data we should be using? The way to answer that question, uh, Hanika, about primary or secondary, I look at these as... Um, Tactic. Primary data will, is a tactic that will give you a certain type of insights. Secondary data is another tactic. And, and I'll answer that question, but let me just preface it by saying all business owners or CEOs or entrepreneurs, rather than looking at tactics, they need to be more strategic in their thinking. And what I mean by that is, you know, they need to figure out what are the key things that they need to get answered before they deploy any kind of tactic. Because a tactic is a tactic. It will only give you, uh, you know, a very limited solution to what you're trying to get at. So, for example, you know, you're this entrepreneur. You've got this crazy idea that's keeping you up at night. Well, go to Google, figure out, you know, answers to some of your questions. And then as you still have more questions or what I like to tell my clients is, don't expect just one research activity to completely take away your confusion, but expect one research activity to elevate your confusion to the next level. When you're on 
Google and you've gotten some answers, basically what you've done at Google is you've done the secondary data part, right? right. You've gotten the information that's already there and you've done your research. The best way to understand primary research is, let's say you've done some research on Google, talk to some friends, talk to some people that you know, talk to people at work, talk to people in the family, friends, present your idea to them and get a sense of, you know, what they think about it. A lot of times you can get some good counters to or problems that you haven't thought about from there and then take it a step further figure out who would be a good market for your business or your product or idea, and then seek out people that match that profile. I'll give you an example of this. One of the businesses or startups that I was consulting with on a pro bono basis, they had this new idea for a music service that would um, do a lot of cool things and would not be as expensive as some of the other services out there. And they had spent a lot of time talking to friends and family, and they had spent time doing the secondary data analysis part or just getting on Google, looking at, you know, different competitors. And then I encouraged them to figure out who that service would be most interesting to. And they figured out that it would basically be young people, 18 to 25. And so then they, I encouraged them to seek out the the younger demographic and just engage with them, you know, present your idea to them and get a sense of, would this work? Would they pay for it? Would they get, you know, their legal guardians to pay for it? You know, if they don't have a lot of money and how much would they be able to afford? And as this company was doing all that research, they figured out that, Mm -hmm you know, their target audience would not be able to afford their, their their service. Had they not done that research, then perhaps would have wasted some money, right? Money that they can actually use elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the funny thing is there's another part to the story. In the discussions that they were having with this younger demographic, and in a couple of those discussions, the legal guardians or the parents were also sitting in. And parents started jumping at that idea. People who were 40, 50 plus really like that idea because they were like, oh, this is a level of service I don't get anywhere else. And I would gladly pay the money you're asking for this. So now guess what? In that initial primary research, the market focus changed completely. So now they have a market where not only is the market interested in their new service, but the market can actually pay for that service And a bonus was the market was willing to pay 50% higher than what these guys were thinking. We have done, you know, as a startup, we have looked at going to Google and, you know, Amazon and all these other sources, answer the public and so on. And yes, this this is a go and we're getting all the information that we need to start. You know, um, the young entrepreneur is getting all that information and business is solid, business is growing. At what point your company, I want you to talk to us about your company. Just tell us the name of it, what it is that you're doing and at what stage of the the process, the entrepreneurial journey, will an entrepreneur come to you for your services? So my company is called Gold Research. People can find us on the web at goldresearchinc.com. We primarily service large retail and restaurant and consumer-focused companies. So some of our clients are the likes of... uh, When I say consumer, I'm talking Google, I'm talking Danon, Energizer, some of those brands that you see in retail stores. And then uh, when I say restaurants, I'm talking Panera or uh, Outback Steakhouse, the Burger Kings of the world. And as far as retail goes, I'm thinking the Amazons and the Walmarts of the world. And Henneka, to to my earlier point, when we started the company back in 2010, we were also looking at CEOs and young startups and entrepreneurs as buyers of our service, of what we do. And as we did market research on our business, what we figured out was that 
our services were actually more in demand by these larger multi-million dollar organizations versus startups. Most of the time, startups could not afford some of the things we, we did. So we changed our tact as well in our business, and that's what's made us successful. But even now, you know, we do a lot of pro bono consulting to startups and CEOs where every month I and my team are devoting our time to guiding new startups in how they can grow their business. And once they've grown it to our bottom line is around, you know, 50 million or less uh, or 50 million or more, then we'll be happy to, you know, take them on as paying clients. But before then, you know, they don't need to pay us. We just select and handpick the companies we want to work with and we help them with their market research for free. Absolutely incredible. Now, what are the criteria for um, for some you know, startup to be a part of that? You know, what we look at is really how innovative the idea is. Is it something that will be scalable? Is it something that will grow? And what markets are they focused on? You know, and, and we go about it in two ways. Some are businesses that we have a lot of knowledge about in the industry. So, you know, with those, we take those startups on as a client where we either take an equity share in their companies or we bill them at a future uh, time where they agree to, you know, paying us for our services if their financial goals are met. Or, you know, there are startups where we have no idea about the business, but we can still help them from a, from just guiding them on how to go about their market research. And so those are companies that we might do, you know, a couple of hours for free work every month just to guide them along. There's a startup listening to you right now, a startup entrepreneur. Talk to that one person about the importance of doing research. We're just going to reiterate what was said before, the importance of doing market research before venturing on that business idea that is, you know, so exciting and seems so feasible and so profitable at the ideation stage. My consulting and expertise and advice to that business owner would be research your market, talk to others that have taken the plunge like you. And if you're absolutely convinced you've done the secondary research on Google, you've spoken with friends and family, and you've also gone that extra mile and you've spoken informally with prospective buyers, even before you incorporate, the last thing I would recommend is hire a market researcher. Hire somebody that you can get on a site like freelance.com or upwork.com. You know, there are a lot of qualified market research specialists on the on that site that you can hire for as inexpensively, you know, and, and the idea with that is spend that money in really doing more formal research, whether it's through surveys or focus groups, hire an expert that can work with you on your budget, but really, really wet out your business plan. You know, what is the scope of your market? How much would you be able to sell your product or service for? What would the scalability look like every year? Map all of that out, even before you start thinking about where do I incorporate or how do I build this? Because a lot of times, you know, if if you think of this as a domino, right, where you're knocking one thing down at a time and slow, a small, slow gains build up for larger, bigger gains, where if you've got all the answers, you'll get more and more excited. But now you'll also have the data to back up your idea and, you know, if you need any equity or investments, those are also the pieces of research that a potential investor will ask you for. So it'll also come in handy, you know, if you seek uh, external funding. Nitin Sharma, it's been such a pleasure talking with you about business research and the importance of it for the startup entrepreneur at this point, we're going to ask you to share your contact information where or peak performers can find you, but not only not just your personal information, but perhaps your company information as well, so that our entrepreneurs listening in can reach out to you. 
I would encourage people to look at us online at www.goldresearchinc.com. So all one word, goldresearchinc.com. On our site, you will see a lot of useful content about market research. And you'll also see our office information where you can send us your queries and we'll be happy to respond to them. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Nitin. It has indeed been a pleasure of mine to host you on the Entrepreneurial You podcast. Thank you so much, Hanika. It's always a pleasure. And hopefully what we've discussed will be of value and we'll be able to help some of your listeners. I have no doubt it is. So that's Nitin Sharma. He is a business strategist with experience in market research, data analysis, statistics, and more across multiple sectors. I want to thank you, my peak performers, for tuning into this episode with Nitin Sharma. I look forward to connecting with you next week. In the meantime, here's some information that can change your life for the best. LeaderCast, the largest one-day leadership event in the world, is happening at the Nutsford Court Hotel in Kingston on May 10. Now, LeaderCast Kingston will bring experts such as Gail King and Andy Stanley to help attendees to help you master the art and science of developing and leading healthy teams. Now, the theme for LeaderCast this year is Leading Healthy teams. Now get your tickets for 20% off. Visit HennekaWatkinsPorsche.com to book your spot now. So last year, May, we had LeaderCast Kingston for the first time and in October we had LeaderCast Women. Now it's time again for LeaderCast Kingston so hurry up and go book your ticket at HennekaWatkinsPorsche.com Remember, you were born to win, but to be a winner, you must plan to win. Prepare to win and expect to win. What good? What good?